there's something about clicking into that mode where your heart rate is just dropping through the floor as soon as you start holding your breath and your body is flowing the way it's supposed to when you're in the water. You're so quiet, you have really smooth movements and the fish at a certain point, if you're down there long enough, will just kind of carry on. It's pretty amazing at that moment when you've perfectly dovetailed into an environment like that. Been a professional big wave surfer for a long time, really into spear fishing and hunting as well. I guess my general reputation would be for taking chances that most people wouldn't in big surf. All the best surfers in the world congregate on the North Shore of Oahu during the winter time, and that's high stakes. It's like people are there to make a name for themselves, and that's the environment that was normal to me. I just love that aspect of going and challenging yourself, not just in performance, but I'm in a hostile environment and I need to survive. I've seen stuff go bad, and I've had stuff go bad, so I know it's a definite possibility. You're dealing with such an intimidating force of nature. I'm forcing myself into these situations where I'm gonna have to confront something very challenging and uncomfortable to achieve a goal or to even survive. That's the only way I pull the best out of myself. That's kind of a draw to me and a common thread through all of this stuff. It's in very intense situations, maintaining composure with your mind and your body. If there's a chance to achieve something that I want to, I will take that risk. When I was a kid, it was all just swimming from the beach and going out and maybe getting caught in a current, almost getting sucked out to sea and then, oh, I found a really good spot. It's total wilderness, and it's not going to be the same every single day. Jump off, Cyrus. Go. It's just that dynamic aspect of the ocean that keeps me coming back. Whenever I'm moving around and using the bottom structure while spearfishing, I'm very aware of what part of my body the fish can see and what they can't see, and using that as a tool to either make them curious or make them unaware of my presence there. When you're bow hunting, you have to be hyper aware of what that animal can see and what you look like through their eyes. You might be having a herd feeding your way, then all of a sudden a turkey shows up. So all of a sudden, your whole game is hoping this turkey just doesn't blow out of there and scare the deer. So that's kind of similar to spearfishing in that everything's in play, even the small little aquarium looking fish that's just three feet in front of you. If it spooks, it spooks something else and it creates this ripple effect all the way out to the fish that you're targeting. I feel like I'm stepping into an orchestra and I have to seamlessly play my instrument in. It's not coming in and just like banging cymbals like, this is my show now. It doesn't work like that. It's joining the momentum of that environment and then leaving it the same way you came in without it changing. Sometimes I'll go out for four hours and not pull the trigger once, but there's a constant stimulus there because I'm watching how it every other fish and organism interacts with each other. Uh, most of it is just observing and trying to be a non-invasive part to that environment, and sometimes you decide to take a fish.
through the process of trying to make my bubble bigger of things that I'm self-sufficient in, I realized that it's not about doing it all yourself. You have to have community, and there's a certain trust that goes along with that. My goal is to be as close to the environment and the world around me as possible.